Go ahead and find a place to sit down. We'll go ahead and get the service started this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Turn and tell your neighbor it's sure good to see you this morning. Amen. It's good to gather with the people of God in the house of God. Amen. Thankful for the opportunity to be here on a Sunday morning. Excited for what the Lord's going to do in this service today. I want to go ahead and make a few announcements. First off, today we want to celebrate 26 years of faithful leadership under Pastor and our First Lady, his brother and sister Snow at Faith Tabernacle. Can we give them a hand clap, a round of applause here today, amen. I believe we've got the best pastor in the world, amen. And uh, give honor where honor is due, and we're very thankful. Twenty-six years is longer than I've been alive, so that's awesome. <laughs> I think we have a great pastor, don't we? He is a great. Okay, today is Building Sun Fun. Wow, if I'm getting my words backwards. It's Building Fun Sunday. So, um, like I always encourage you guys, um, Building Fun that keeps the church going. Okay, as the church grows, we need more space. We need more place to do activities and to have fellowship. So this is going to be going towards um, all those future things to grow the church, and we're looking forward to it. Man, also we've got a wedding shower for Molly Westfall and Jesse Williams. Man, excited for them. That'll be tonight following the evening service. They are registered at Amazon, Target, and Bed Bath & Beyond. So you've probably waited too late for Amazon, but you can still stop by Target or Bed Bath & Beyond and get something for them tonight. All right, so Tuesday, this is going to be February 9th. It's going to be Sisterhood of Grace. So if you are between the ages of 19 to 35, I want you to raise your hand. Between 19 and 35, this is for you. It is a time of fellowship of ladies and a time that you can come and just be renewed. Um, we also have good food every time, and there's this really cool um, Bible study that we do. So come be a part. Um, it's a great time. Also, if you're new, just to make some new friends that are godly. And also, the annual business meeting will be held February the 28th following the evening service. So be sure to put that down on your calendar. Be here and be a part of that. Yeah, and then prime timers are going to have an outing. It's going to be Saturday the 20th, and there's going to be more information to come. So uh, they'll get with us, and hopefully by next week we'll have some more info on that. Awesome deal. Also, if you're a kid in Children's Church, wave your hand at me. All right, today... Everybody say today. today. Today is the last day to turn in money for the Valentine's Day BGMC Challenge. Okay, when is the last day? Today. today. Okay, awesome deal. So you can turn it in this morning. You can turn it in tonight. But after the service is done tonight, it's done. At Wednesday... It's done. All right, so be sure to bring it here today. Turn it in next week. They'll be presenting the prizes for the winners. And I also just want to say a big thank you to the support uh, that the church has shown to the kids coming by with BGMC Buddy Barrels. I truly appreciate you being involved in the work of the Lord. Amen. All right. All right. How many of you guys like to eat? I like to eat, okay? I like good food. Next Sunday night, we're going to be having a youth fundraiser, okay? When you go out to eat at just a normal fast food restaurant, the money you give them is covering the food, and then you're paying the workers, okay? This next Sunday night, it's going to be donation basis. We're going to have a nacho bar, and all those proceeds are going to go towards that building fund, okay? We're specifically putting it towards our multi-purpose building because the youth is looking forward to have something, okay? It's going to have, uh, we'll have a place to play ball and then just to have some activities over there. So uh, we invite you guys, please come be a part. That's going to be a good time. You can fellowship with your friends and then also um, have some nachos at the same time, so... Amen. I'm excited for what the Lord's going to do in this service. I don't know about y'all, but I need something from the Lord this morning. Amen. I need God to come by, touch me, and help me. So I wonder, as we start off this service, if we could just lift our hands and invite the presence of the Lord into this place. God, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, your goodness to us, God. You are great and greatly to be praised. You are worthy, King of kings and Lord of lords. God, we ask that you would come and inhabit this place, Lord. Let your power, your presence, your spirit fall upon your people, God. We give you glory and honor. Oh, when I think of the good. 
goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. My soul cries out, hallelujah, thank you God for saving.
lift your hands and praise him this morning Father we thank you we praise you Lord and we magnify you we bless your name great is the Lord and greatly to be praised we worship you this morning King of Kings and Lord of Lords one more time just lift both hands toward heaven praise him this morning thank you Lord thank you Lord great is our God and great is your faithfulness the amazing grace of God that reaches down to fallen man. We praise you. We worship you. God bless you. My God is awesome. He can move mountains, keep me in the valley, hide me from the rain. My God is awesome, heals me when I'm broken, strength where I've been weakened forever. me 
me from the rain. My God is awesome. Use me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weakened. Oh, forever. Stripes I'm healed. Oh, my God is awesome. Today I am forgiven. His grace is why I'm living. I'm going to praise His holy name. We are healed. My God is awesome. Today I am forgiven. His grace is why I'm living. I've come to bless His holy name. Believe it today. Awesome. Oh, he's mighty and powerful. Awesome. Oh, and he's mighty. 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 And say he's my protector, protector, he's my protector, protector, and he's awesome. Yeah. He's been my protector, protector, my protector, protector, and he's awesome. He's speaker, he's speaker, and he's awesome. I have no reason to fear. Oh, he's been my provider, 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 and he's awesome. Yes. Oh, I'm thankful he's my healer. My healer, my healer, my healer, my healer, my healer, and he's awesome. Yeah. 
He's able. He's able. He's able. Oh, hallelujah. Whatever you're facing today, you can stand in confidence and say, I know he's able. He's able. He's able. Yes, he's able. And he's awesome. Worthy. He's worthy and he's awesome. awesome. My God is awesome. Savior of the whole world, giver of salvation. By his stripes, oh, I'm healed. My God is I am forgiven. His grace is why I'm living. I've come to praise His holy name. Savior, you're our deliverer, you're our soon coming King, we praise you this morning, hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, hallelujah, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer this morning, we're just uh, believing the Lord, several that we've been praying for. Uh, we've gotten uh, uh, some good reports. Uh, glad to see Gene Giles in church uh, this morning. Glory to God. Been praying for him. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. This is Catherine Sprayberry. We're back again this week. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because God is a God of victory. And there are others that we've been praying for. Just uh, uh, want to uh, remember to uh, uh, Brother Edwards uh, went home, uh, and uh, we're, we thank the Lord for that, that God is touching him and that God is helping him. Uh, we want to remember uh, Brother David. Uh, he needs a touch from the Lord. Uh, it just needs for God to come by and work. Sister Patsy Hood uh, uh, needs the Lord. She's in the hospital. She needs the Lord to touch her. Uh, uh, praise God. Uh, Sister South uh, is uh, uh, needs a help, needs a touch. Uh, uh, Sister Davis's dad uh, fell, and he needs a touch from the Lord. They think he broke a rib, and uh, uh, we just want to continue to pray for him. Bonnie Bland uh, has the problem with her knee. Uh, we continue to... Uh, uh, pray for Brother Josh that God would do a complete work. Sister Katrina uh, is is here uh, faithfully and just believe in God to come by and to minister. Praise the Lord. I wonder if you're in here this morning, you have a very special need. I want you to stand as we go to the Lord in prayer, representing that need. Glory to God. Sister Sprayberry is, uh, uh, needs a touch from the Lord. And uh, you know that if Sister Sprayberry is not here, it's, it's pretty bad. And uh, uh, her blood pressure was uh, uh, giving her problems this morning. Uh, we've got those that are standing. I'd like for uh, a brother to come to each brother that's standing, a sister to each sister. Uh, and let's just believe God for these needs this morning. We serve an awesome God. Hallelujah. We serve a God that's provided for every situation that we face. Let's call on him this morning. 
Father, we praise you. We glorify you this morning. Lord God, you're the creator of heaven, earth, the sea, all that's in them. Lord God, you're our creator. And God, I pray that you would minister to each situation, Lord, this morning. God, that you would touch those that are in need of healing. And God, that you would just reach down your hand. Lord God, you provided for our healing through your Son, Jesus Christ. By his stripes, we are healed. Hallelujah. God, you sent your word, and you healed, and you delivered. And God, we're praying for deliverance today. Uh, God, we're praying that you would show yourself strong in each situation that's represented here. Father, that you would minister. Lord God, that you would move. Lord, for your glory, we pray today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord, this morning. We glorify you. We thank you, Lord God, for the answer. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We'll dismiss the children to Children's Church at this time. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank God for the children. Amen. Thank the Lord for the children and their desire to be involved in ministry and giving. Ushers, come. Let's worship the Lord in our giving this morning. Glory to God. God's been good to us and blessed us. He's faithful. We serve a faithful God who's in control of every situation and circumstance. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we thank you this morning for the privilege that we have to worship you in giving. Pray that you would bless in this tithe and offering. Thank you for the people that desire to imitate you and give as unto the Lord. Bless in this offering. Bless the gift and the giver. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. This morning, I just want to step up here for a moment, and I want to invite, uh, if you're between the ages of 12 and 20, 18, somewhere in that range, raise your hand. Awesome deal. So we have youth every Friday night, and I'm going to encourage you, we've been having a move of the Lord every Friday night. Um, the Spirit's been being poured out, and God's been working and moving in hearts and lives, um, and, and, and God's, God's working and God's speaking, and I want to encourage you and challenge you parents. Um, if you can get your kids there, it'll make a difference in their lives. 
And I speak from experience. You want a testimony, go see my parents. Uh, there was times in my life where I wasn't everything that I needed to be, but I tell you what, there was a place that I could come on Friday nights. Amen. And the Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord and the presence of God would come down and God would begin to deal with my heart. And all of a sudden, the Lord would begin to bring me back into the place that I needed to be. And part of the large part of the reason why I am standing here today is because Friday night youth services. And young people, I want to encourage you. I want to challenge you. You ask your parents for a lot of things. Right? We know it's true. Parents, can you say amen to that? Kids ask you for a lot of things. Ask your parents to bring you to youth on Friday night. I'm going to tell you, you belong, you have a place, and God has a purpose for your life. So come and be a part, and let's see what the Lord will do in this next generation. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. I had honestly uh, forgot what today was till I got to church. And I walked in and Brother Kirkland said, happy anniversary. And I said, my anniversary was in August. He said, no, I'm talking about as far as being here at the church. And it's hard to believe that we are starting our 27th year at uh, the Tabernacle. I was, I was 29 years of age when they uh, asked us to come. They didn't know what they was getting into, and uh, they still don't, praise God. But uh, the Lord is, the Lord has been good to us, blessed in us, and uh, thankful for Sister Snow. It's a privilege to serve uh, you, Amen. She is the senior pastor, and I'm the assistant. So uh, we we work together well, and uh, but I'm thankful for. Uh, my wife, and I'm thankful for my family. Um, Ashley and Amy was eight years of age, so that tells you how old they are. Um, we lived right across the street from the school. They was, they might have been seven. I think they was in the seven. Okay, is in the first grade, um, and. Uh, just finished first grade, getting ready to start second grade. And um, we uh, moved them, and uh, it was life-changing for them. And the Lord has greatly helped us. And um, I said, I'm not going to come and sacrifice my children. I'm going to give them to you, Lord. And God has blessed us and helped us. And I'm thankful for my children. Audrey, you're all Audrey's ever known. So uh, we're thankful for the goodness of the Lord to us today. Praise God. Thank you, musicians. I don't think I'm going to sing. We may sing at a later date. Um was in prayer for this service this morning. We want to pray for Pastor Tim. He is ministering uh, over another location this morning in a church. And um, had a great week at the Bible school. And we're thankful for the hand of the Lord upon him, our staff. It's good to have them back. Sister Amy, it's good to have you back and the boys. And we're glad that each one of you is gathered here with us today. Praise the Lord. Um, I appreciate you showing up. I really do. I appreciate those that are watching online. And uh, God has helped us and God has done some great and wonderful things. And I'm believing that uh, should the Lord tarry by the end of the year, uh, when a lot of this stuff is over with, that uh, you'll be just stacked in here like sardines. 
in the altars and and uh, God's just going to, I'm just believing the Lord for a great harvest. I believe it's a year of the harvest and I believe he spoke that to me personally and uh, excited about it. Numbers chapter 10, Numbers chapter 10, Numbers chapter 10, verses 29 through 32. Hallelujah. I feel like there's something I'm forgetting, but don't know what it is. So that's what happens when you've been here a while. Scott, one of these days you'll get old and you'll know what I'm talking about. All right. Numbers chapter 10, Numbers chapter 10, and verse 29. Verse 29. If you found it, say amen. And Moses said unto Hobab, the son of Ragul the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, we are journeying unto the place of which the Lord said, I will give it you. Come thou with us, and we will do thee good. For the Lord hath spoken good concerning Israel. And he said unto him, I will not go but I will depart to my own land and to my kindred. And he said, this was Moses, leave us not, I pray thee, for as much as thou knowest how we are to encamp in the wilderness, and thou mayest be to us instead of eyes. And it shall be, if thou go with us, yea, it shall be that what goodness the Lord shall do unto us, the same will he do unto thee. Come on, Hobab. Go with us. Come on. Go with us. And I got three people that's excited about this morning. Starting 27 years, and I come to tell you this morning, come on, Hobab. I started title it Hobab the Arab, because that's what he was. Come on, Hobab. Get your act together, son. Go with us. Go with us. Is there anybody in here that can shout, go with us? I'm headed somewhere. I'm going on a journey. Hallelujah. Come and go with us. Come and go with us. Father, we thank you for your word, the privilege to be in your house this morning. Sweep over this place. Touch every heart and every life. Minister and move in the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said amen and amen. God bless you as you are seated. Come on, Hobab, go with us. He is the son of Jethro. Now what you need to know, let me give you a little bit of history about Moses. He's down by the divine hand of God. He's in Egypt. He has slew an Egyptian there that is beating up on an Israelite and he has to turn and he flees. But it's all in the providence and the sovereignty of God. And he finds himself out here in the wilderness and he comes across a man and and, 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 it's such a wonderful story. If you haven't read the word of God lately, you need to get into the word of God. If you want an adventurous book, a book of romance, if you want a book of of excitement and adventure, read the Word of God. And you will see how that God in His sovereignty was directing the steps of a man who feels like he's running and doesn't understand. Here I am and what has God done and what is God doing? And he's sitting there and, 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 and there's something I love about Moses. He cannot stand bullies. 
I mean, he just had to flee Egypt because there's a guy down there that's putting a whooping on an Israelite and he walks up and kills him. That's how upset he got over it. And he has to flee and and here he is and he's sitting there and he's watching and all of a sudden these ladies come into the well and this band of, of Midianites come in there and they start to drive these girls away from getting water. They just start bullying their way in to take over. And all of a sudden, he says, "Uh uh-uh, that ain't going to happen. He didn't know them. He didn't know anything about them. Moses walks down there and says, you boys got to get out. And all of a sudden, he starts drawing the water, and he starts watering these girls' camels. And they, hey, hey. And, And all of a sudden, they get back home, and their dad says, man, you're home early. What happened today? And they said, man, there was this Egyptian. He came down there. They don't even know who he is. They just said, there's this Egyptian. And he came down there, and he put the bullies to flight, and he got water for us, and he watered our flock and our and he did everything and he said go find this man bring him here I want him to have supper with us and in the providence of God here he is and he's standing there and he says hey here and and just so happens I've got a beautiful daughter here Zipporah and and she's going to be your wife and he leaves there married to Zipporah But he has a brother-in-law by the name of Hobab. And he goes down and God brings him down and he gets God's people and he brings them all out of Egypt by the mighty hand of God and he coming back through and they come back by and he sees Hobab again. Now you gotta stay with me. You gotta understand the relationship. You gotta understand, can you imagine the laughter? Hey, hold back, brother. Man, you remember the time you came up here, man, you're looking good. God's been good to you. Man, we've heard what all God done and how the plagues and what all God is doing. And we heard the miraculous, wonderful things of God upon you and your life. And I never believed that it would happen. And all of a sudden, an invitation is given to Hobab. An invitation is given to him. Now let me ask you something. Did they need a guide? No, they did not need a guide. If you read the scripture, they had the cloud to lead them. God was divinely direct, but God was giving an opportunity for him to be included and to be a part of the family of God and be of use to the kingdom. Just in case you're here and you think you're something on a stick, I'm telling you there's a hundred out there that God could get a hold of. Just to, listen, I'm nothing, friend. I'm just a I'm just a six foot three pile of mud. I'm telling you, I'm mud and you're mud. We was created from the dust, but it was the mighty hand of God as we was willing to say, Lord, I understand that I'm nothing, but you can use me. I'll take what I have and I'll give it to you he didn't need him God chose to give him the opportunity Now you need to understand the Midianites were people of the wilderness there are people of the wilderness and God said I'm going to give you the opportunity to be useful for the people of God There was a presence that was desired. Well, there ain't nothing for me. I'm not like everybody else. Thank God you're not like everybody else. If everybody would have been slaves and everybody had the same or they had the same mindset, I want you to stay with me this morning. God bring, I mean, you look in the book of Acts in the early church and it was started. What happened when it was started there? It was started with a woman named Dorcas who sold material. It was started with a jailer. I'm in here to keep you all straight. I mean, it was started with all kinds. What what other corporation? What other what other affiliation? There's no other gathering. I mean, you go down to a place, you go down to work, they got all they all have something in common. What is it that we have in common? You take you got an electrician, you got a plumber, you got a computer guy, you got a banker, you got a businessman, you got a guy that comes in, he's got mud from the top of his head, and you got a guy that won't even touch mud. 
You got farmers, you got city people, you got people that drive pickups and people that don't even like pickups. You got people with big families, you got people with no families, you got all kinds, you got all kinds of nationalities. But what is the common thread? It's we've been called by the mighty hand of God, saved by the precious blood of Jesus. We're family. We're family. I don't know about that. The presence was desired. First thing I want to notice was the grand pilgrimage. We are on a journey, Moses said. Somebody say we're on a journey. Listen, I know where I've been. I know what it was like being down in Egypt. But God has called us out and we're on a journey. I said we're headed somewhere. Somebody say we're headed somewhere. Moses said, look here, brother-in-law. God brought us out. Hallelujah. And he's not, we hadn't made it yet. And we're going somewhere. Come and go with us. We are journeying. You have not arrived yet. You're still on a journey. Somebody needs to be reminded this morning that we are on a grand pilgrimage. There's a country ahead. There's a city which hath foundation, whose builder and maker is God. Hebrews said, for we have, we have no continuing city, but we seek that city. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That city which is to come. Our citizenship Philippians 3 and 20 said it's not here but it is in heaven. I'm headed to heaven. I'm on a journey. Get your mind off of right here. If I was to take and go from here, let's go from here to Dallas. And let's take credit cards, or we'll, we'll even substitute your driver's license, and we're going to stack them up like this, and we're going to, like a two before, we're going to make a road from here to the city limits of Dallas. How many credit cards would it take? And I'm not talking about laying them down flat. I'm talking about stacking them up like this and stack them right here and go out. How many would it take from here to the back door? Can you imagine from here? Now go all the way around the world and come back to right here. How many would it take to stack them together like a stack of cards, reach in there and pull one of them out? That's just a small example of your life compared to eternity. Our time here is nothing compared to where we are headed. We are headed in this journey. We're going to make it by the grace of God. But I'm on a journey and I can't get caught up in right now. Oh, this is, this is just too much. You've got your focus off of the eternal. This grand pilgrimage that we're on. I don't know about you, but I started out and I'm going to finish this race. Well, I wouldn't take nothing from a journey now. Hallelujah. Remember that old song? I started out traveling for the Lord many years ago. I've had a lot of heartache, met a lot of grief and woe. But when I would stumble, then I would humble down. And then I would say I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. I said I'm on a journey. I'm guided by his presence. I'm supported by his power. And I cannot get sidetracked on this journey. There are so many distractions. Somebody was sued not too long ago when they went into the airport because they had those signs up there that would tell you, they would change and tell you which flights was going to each gate. And somebody was reading that sign and ran into somebody. And they sued the people of the signs. 
The bad thing is, is they won. And they had to change the sign because they said that the sign was a distraction. <laughs> Get your eyes off of the distractions. Keep your eyes on the prize that's ahead. I am on a journey. And, the, and, and Moses said, we are on a journey. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm on a journey. I said, I'm on a journey. I said, I got to remember that I'm on a journey. This grand pilgrimage. And with this grand pilgrimage, second of all, there was a gracious plea. Come thou with us. Come and go with us. We will do thee good. For the Lord hath spoken good concerning Israel. It was an offer of salvation. Israel, who had been saved by the mighty hand of God. Hallelujah. Does anybody in here remember what it was like when you was under the old wicked taskmaster and the devil had his way and he was working on you? He was beating your back. You was down in Egypt's bondage and the things you didn't want to do, you found yourself doing it. But one day the mighty hand of God came by and the blood was applied to the doorpost of your life and you was set free. Does anybody remember that day? There was an offer of salvation. Israel had been saved. I know things. Can you imagine? I, I, I know. I know. Brother-in-law, well, how, how y'all doing? How's things going? My goodness, Moses, you got a whole bunch of people. How are you feeding them people? God, miraculously, watch this in the morning. Where'd y'all get that bread? That's good bread. Well, we think it's good. We've been eating it for a day or two. Remember when you first got saved, how good it was? But after you've been eating on it a while. Huh? But you need to remember what it was like when you was back there in Egypt. You got to remember you're on a journey. He said, come on, Hobab, we'll do thee good. Now, who was Hobab? He was a Midianite. He was a Midianite. What was Midianites? They was aliens. They was outsiders. They had no rights to the promises of God. Y'all ain't hearing me. So was you. We was Gentiles. We was aliens. We was far from the kingdom of God. But he grafted us into the vine. He made a way and he gave an invitation so that you and I could be a part of the family of God. Hobab the Arab had an invitation to be something that nobody else around him had received. Y'all, stay with me. There's people on your street that have never experienced conviction. When you leave here and go to eat lunch today, you're going to bump shoulders and run into people and see folks that does not know and have never heard a gospel message about conviction and what God could do in their heart and in their life. But yet God in his sovereignty has given you the opportunity. Opportunity of salvation, that opportunity to serve Hobab. See, Hobab knew what it was like to be in the wilderness. He knew the terrain. Hobab knew where the water holes was. Hobab knew how to survive in the heat. They've been down in Egypt. They don't know. Moses has been raised and Hobab could be of service. I want to ask you a question. And one day I'll find out the answer. Do you think if Hobab would have went, maybe they wouldn't have wandered for 40 years? Do you think one man's decision could change the whole direction? You could be his eyes for us. See what they did in the wilderness? If you've ever been over there, they wandered in a circle.
Only God knows how many times they came by the border and was so close to crossing in, but yet kept wandering in a circle. Come on, Hobab. You can be of service to us. You can help us to get there. Come on, young people, you can help us to get there. There's young lives that you can touch that we'll never be able to reach if you don't come and go with us. Come on, Hobab, go with us. There's an opportunity for salvation. There's an opportunity to serve. God will use your skills. There's a place for you. Obtaining of satisfaction. You can be here with your sister. You can be here with your brother-in-law. You can be here with your family. But most importantly, Hobab, you can be in the presence of God. You don't have to just hear about what God has done for us. It can be about what God has done for you. Hallelujah, Hobab. Come and go with us. Psalmist David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper. Oh, in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Oh, don't you know there's some mean people in there? I know they was, but it's still better than being with them out there. Huh? Yeah. I know there was some grumbling and griping and complaining, but God's going to take care of all of that. It's up to me to get in there and to do my part, keep my mind set that I'm on a journey. Hallelujah. The greatest joy there is is walking with the people of God in unity toward the celestial city, the grand pilgrimage, the gracious plea, and then he gives him a glorious promise. We will do thee good. If you'll come and go with us, we will do thee good. Matthew 6 and 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You cannot outdo. You cannot outgive. You will not ever outdo God if you put him first and you put everything you got into it. There's a God in heaven that will reward you. Hallelujah. The reward of service. The glorious promise. Hobab, if you'll just sacrifice, you can have life like you've never experienced. If you'll just turn your back on your way and you'll go with us, you can have life, Hobab. What chapter is this? Ten. When you get home, Look at chapter 31. What happened in chapter 31? All of the Midianites was destroyed. In chapter 21, all of them was slaughtered except the virgins. Because of their wickedness, the Midianites, Hobab. Chapter 10, he's given an invitation. By chapter 21, yeah, testing. This is a very serious matter this morning. Y'all, some of you have heard the gospel preached. You've heard the invitation, and I'm doing the best I know how to this morning. And many times I wonder if maybe my voice has fallen on ears. It's heard it so many times. But I'm telling you, there's a reward of sacrifice. And if you'll follow after the Lord, there'll be salvation. There's a reward of surrender. There's safety. Because in chapter 22, he said, As the ox licketh up the grass of the field, there was a disease, I'm telling you, that fell on them. I'm telling you, when you reject the call to surrender, I can promise you that God is not a man that he should lie and his spirit will not always strive with man and when the spirit of God is dealing with you and he's giving you an invitation you better respond and receive it or he'll wipe you away hallelujah his spirit will not always strive with you
It's a dangerous thing. It's a dangerous thing to reject the Spirit of God, to quench the Spirit of God. There are some of you in this house and some that are watching this morning and the Spirit of God is drawing you to, come on, go with us. I've told you, I, I, I love them. I, I, I study it and Audrey called me. She was doing a report on the Maasai tribe. First thing that come to my mind was that I sent her. Because I saw it firsthand. I saw it firsthand. Them warriors for the Edema Chinobi. For them to come in and get their daughter's hand. See, they are wilderness. The Maasai people out there, they, they work out there and they keep their cattle and their goats and their sheep. And they guard them from the adversaries, the main adversaries being lions. And so if you wanted to marry a young lady, Asher, and you went and you asked the father, you would have to bring him the head of a lion that you had killed, proving that you was a man. So I, that was the first thing I sent to Ashley. I said, I'm waiting for Caleb to bring. Caleb, Caleb to bring me a head of a lion. I don't see that happening. I watched as boys, little boys out there with sticks and staves. You can, you can see it yourself if you get interested. They will sit and they will watch. They will watch a pride of 15 lionesses. The lions just stay back. They let the girls do all the work. And then they come roaring in to try to eat. But three of those men will get up and all of a sudden they go walking toward this, this fresh kill and they will pull out and they will cut a ham off of a wildebeest or an impala or whatever they and they will, by marching straight in, the lions step back and stand over there and growl because somebody's marching toward them with authority. Twenty lions will dissipate when two or three walk together. Oh, I wish somebody would help me in this house this morning. I'm telling you, I'm asking you to come and go with us and we will do thee well. There's a promise. There's provision that is for you if you'll come and be a part of the family of God. You reject the call of the surrender. I can promise you God's word is true. There's a place of service for you. But what did he say? He said, the same will be for you as it is for us. The same Lord that's helping us will help you. Brother Snow, I wish the Lord could help me. If you'll come and give your all and get in here, the same God that's helping us will help you. I said, the same God that's helping us, for God is not unrighteous to forget your works, Hebrews 6 said, and your labor of love which ye have shown toward his name as you minister to the saints. Yesterday I was in a funeral. The dear brother that is, was our former district superintendent, Brother Derwood DeBose. I loved... Him, from the first time I met him and any time I was around him as a young man, he always made me feel appreciated. And as a young minister, I appreciated that. I looked and I saw Sister Rita Sperry. She was here and testified just a few nights ago. I saw her. She was greeting people all over the place. They were standing there and there was Vista. I didn't know she knew any of them. And she said, oh, Brother Snow, she came up. She said, he was my pastor when I was a child. She talked for a moment about his effect on their family. And as a pastor, and she'd come 
years later to show her appreciation. Brother Durward was our district superintendent. And in 1990, he, he preached a lot of times, and I'll never forget some messages he preached, and he, he had invisible banners. One of them was when Abraham and Lot's servants was fighting over the wells. I guess we had something going on in the district. I didn't know about it, but he did. And he said, read this banner with me. Let there be no strife. <laughs> Do you see that banner? Let there be no strife. And he preached about if, if somebody go over here and start digging another well. Don't let there be strife. Powerful message. But in 1999, he preached a message that so got a hold of my heart. He titled it, The Best is Yet to Come. And it resonated in my spirit. He said, you can focus, you can believe whatever you want, or you can believe like Joseph that God is in control and that the best is yet to come and I'm gonna hold on, hallelujah. I remember last year while we were sitting up here on this platform on this Sunday, and you great folks honored us as, po- as folks shared on video and many of them finished with the phrase that they had heard me say, The best is yet to come. I've got pictures in my office that have across the bottom, the best is yet to come. Where did that come from? That come from 1999 when a district superintendent preached a message that got a hold of my spirit that said the best, oh, y'all ain't gonna help me. I'm telling you, you can make a difference not only on this generation, but the next generation. If you will surrender, there's a place of service for you and God will use you. All I can do is I'm a carpenter. There's a place for you. I'm a plumber. There's a place for you. All I can do is stand and smile. There's a place for you. You can be his eyes for us. There's an opportunity for you. But see, there was a great problem. There was a great pilgrimage, gracious plea, glorious promise, but there was a great problem. And that was I will not go. But I will depart to my own land. I I can only imagine the the excitement of Moses, a leader. Hey, hey, Zip. That's short for Zipporah. Hey, Zip. You think old brother-in-law, I'm going to give him an invitation. You think, man, he... Man, that guy knows where the water and oil is. I mean, he knows everything about everything. Man, what what great things it would be if he'd. Man, I hope he goes with us, Grayson. That'd be awesome. Thank you for your service to our country, buddy. I'm telling you what's a fact. He he said, it'd be awesome if you'd go with us. Man, that would be. Nah. Y'all, man, y'all have church all the time. Y'all follow that cloud thing. I don't know. I, I can't follow that cloud. I, I mean, I don't mind, you know, I don't mind about every four Sunday, but I mean, you can drop by anytime, Mo Mo, but you know, I mean, really get in there and go with you every day? Are you serious? Nah. <laughs> oh, thanks, but no thanks. I'll stay here because I got to get down to the broken spoke on Fridays. I got to get with my own people, you know. I, I mean, y'all do your thing. I got my thing. Y'all do your thing. I know what you say, and I know what your God says, but, and that's all good for you. But that, I'm telling you, Hobab, if you just knew what was just a few moments down the road, I believe you'd go back and reconsider. I want you to come on and go with us, friend. I'm telling you, we'll do thee well. And the same God that's helped us will help you if you go. But but there was a great problem. No, I'm going to stay here. 
Well, it may be good right now, but I'm going to tell you, friend, this world's going to get worse, and your life of sin is going to get worse, and you may think it's happy and fine right now, but it's all going to turn around, and the devil's going to make a fool out of you, and I'm telling you, the people of God is marching onward. Nah. Y'all kind of crazy. Y'all goofy. I don't know that I could go to church all the time. Well, keep going every Friday night and Giving your check away to the casino. Casino. Head on down there to Wind River. I ain't got money to pay no ties. I'm telling you what, it's so much cheaper serving the Lord. And you give up buying that beer and cigarettes. You can not only pay your tithes, you can pay putting some in the offering and the missions. <laughs> Glory to God. This is the best life there is in serving the Lord. Come on, Hobab. Come on, Hobab. Nah, I'm going to stay here with my people. I'm going to stay here. He didn't want to leave his fame. He didn't want to leave his friends. And he was looking at his future in the wilderness. When God had a future for Hobab and his family in the promised land. But he said, nah, I'm going to do my thing. Y'all do yours, I'll do my Friend, you better get a hold of this book right here and you better follow it. You better get off your feelings and what you feel like's right and you better honor this right here because it's going to be the road map that's going to get you there. And I'm telling you, it's just about over with. I said it's just about over with. And when it's all said and done and this world's on fire and the folks that are left behind that have rejected the call of the heavenly Moses, I'm telling you, friend, you're going to regret the fact that you said, I'm going to do my own thing. Come and help me, musicians. It was a great pilgrimage, grand pilgrimage, a gracious plea, a glorious promise, but a great problem. But I notice one more time, fifthly, there was a gentle persuasion. Leave us not, I pray thee. He said it again. Leave us not. Today is a day of salvation. Don't give up. Hold on. Go with us. Come on, Hobab. I, I got something, and uh, you, you may not like it. But if you don't, I'm sorry, but I do. So, I'm going to show you. So, if you don't like it, forgive me. Okay, here it is. Picture number one. Ha, ha, ha. Woo. As this morning. See, I know you don't know what that is, but... That's the wedding dress of Audrey that was brought to us this morning. And see, she didn't know it was coming. She didn't know it was coming. Oh, isn't that exciting, girls? Yes, yes. But I don't know if you can see it or not, but right up there by that sprinkler is, is a piece of wire. Well, I don't know what kind of wire. It's electrical wire that I pulled out of a because when Amy got married 
she needed a place that was the nursery and she needed a place to steam clean her dress and that's where they're getting dressed and she said dad there ain't no place in here to hang it so I'm from Arkansas I went and I found me some some electrical wire and I stripped it down and I pulled that white wire and I twisted it off and I made a place where she could hang it up there and and, and you got to remember before then the the ceiling was about a foot and a half lower before Brother Gary come in there and raised it for me before I moved in the office so I wouldn't feel you know it's okay for the babies they're down here but when you look through and you walk in the ceiling's right here man. so he raised it so but see here's Here's that. That is the same piece of wire that I hung Amy's dress on. How long ago? Ten and a half years? Ten and a half years ago. And there she steam cleaned it. And I told, I'd tell Ashley, I'd say, Ashley, I'm going to leave that hanging there till I hang yours up there. Well, she was in a seven year relationship. Felt God speak to her in the middle of the night about one o'clock. She came down and all that dissolved. And it was a very hard time for her. And she went about three or four years trying to find where she fit because all of her friends had got married. But she's 25. She is 25, and I believe it was a Wednesday night, and I believe it was somewhere right in the here. She was one of the last ones to leave the service. And she was standing there, and she was weeping. And she was crying. I knew. I knew she was crying because she was trying to find her place. And she came in, and she was totally happy. I thought, man, some guy's called or something. Hallelujah. And she started weeping and she said, Dad, I just realized something. God, help me in the service tonight. I don't need no man to make me happy. She said, all I need is to serve God and to put Him first. And if I put Him first, I get my contentment and I get my joy and I get everything from Him. I don't need somebody or some friendship if some girl don't speak to me. I'd let it upset me and I'd let it offend me and I'd get all weird if somebody don't talk to me in the youth group. Come on, shout with me now, I'm preaching to you. But she said, I found that my source is following the Lord. And I promise as God is my witness, she was totally different, Sister Byron. She was totally different. She was different in the home. Her attitude changed. Not that it was bad before, but it was a whole lot better. And wouldn't you know it, in about two months, an old boy that had been pursuing her for years, and she just said, no, he's a good, he's a great friend. I love being around him. He's funny. He's goofy. But I don't love him she come in and said I think I love him and he called me up and said brother Snow something's happened you know what happened she got her eyes off of her plans and said I'm going to come and go with the Lord y'all ain't helping me but after after I hung up her dress on that white electrical wire I told Audrey I said that's enough I'm taking that wire down and I don't know that she ever looked but Kylie I never did I raised the ceiling Brother David we was putting that was putting that back up in there and I said Brother David leave leave that wire there because that's a hanging promise So this morning I sent a picture and the first thing Audrey sent back was I thought you took that down. I said no I left it there on purpose knowing that a promise was coming. Some of you God gave you some promises and you started out on this journey and it's gotten weary and you said oh no I, I, just, I just can't do it I can't go no longer and some of you has got your own will and you've got sidetracked along the way but I come to tell somebody this morning turn around Hobab come and go with us look at this 
Look at this. I went back in my, there's another picture. Is there not another picture? There it is. Is that all of it? Did he cut out the rest of it? He did. I didn't, I didn't specify. You can, if you don't believe me, you can look at it. It says February the 12th, 2012. No, 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 no. February the 14th, Valentine's Day. Because Ashley was going through a rough time. February the 14th is Valentine's Day. It's a day of love. And I took that picture and I sent it to her. And I said, hold on. There's a God in heaven that loves you. And he's given us some promises. Y'all ain't going to help me preach. And every once in a while, when I'd see her get a little depressed, I'd just send her that picture right there of a hanging promise of something that was coming. Can I tell the bride of Christ? Can I tell the bride of Christ? Just hold on. Just hold on. Just hold on. There's a wedding that's about to take place. Just keep going. Hallelujah. Don't you dare give up now. Don't you dare turn around now. Hold on. And if you're straggling along the edge, there's a grand invitation that's been given this morning. Come on, Hobab. Come and go with us. Get in here with everything you got. Put your everything into it. We're going to make heaven. When the Midianites was being destroyed and God said it's enough and the Moabites moved in and destroyed them, you can't tell me. You can't tell me that Hobab, when he saw his children being slain, and he's standing there fighting beside his son. And he's standing there fighting. And he sees them being destroyed one by one. He's not saying, oh my God. I wish I'd have went with Moses. I wish I'd have went with Moses. I wish I'd have followed after the Lord. I'm telling you, when you're laid up in an ICU room, or you look over the bed at your children, you're going to be crying out, I wish I'd have followed after God. I wish I'd have given my everything to the Lord. I'm telling you, there's a price to pay, friend, if you don't follow and get on track. Would somebody help me and pray in this house? Oh, man, come and go with us. Stand with me all over this house. The Spirit of God is speaking to you. You may be watching this morning. Two weeks ago, there were some people that fell in their living room floor. I talked to them again. God's doing great things in their life. God wants to come down and help you right now. You can turn around, sir. Sister, you can turn around and come home. Don't be on the fringes. My God, for the sake of your family. Oh, brothers, no, God don't work like that. God loves you too much. God loves you too much. He knows how to get your attention. You keep following your own way and doing your own thing. Come and go with us. The Spirit of God speak into your heart. I want you to come to this altar right now. Come on. I, the Spirit of the Lord, am speaking to thee this morning. Harden not your heart. Turn to me and live. This is the glorious invitation that is given to you from heaven on high. If you will but follow me, forsake your earthly plans, forsake your earthly ideas, forsake all of those things and look to me and live today, saith the Lord. <laughs> Come right now. The Spirit and the Bride say come. The Spirit and the Bride say come. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. The Spirit of the Lord's dealing with you. Hallelujah. Yes. God's speaking. Come on.
come on. 